CEO Stephen Scherer joins us now. He's going to break down the quarter, answer a few more questions than that. It's good to see you, Stephen. Um, you know, let's start off on the outlook, which seems to be quite positive. I mean, on the call, you said, you know, on rate for the balance of 2023 20, uh, is for year-over-year -year comparisons to improve, sequential uptick in both rate and demand into Q3. So what are you seeing uh, that gives you a more positive outlook for the second half of the year? Well, good to be with you, David. I mean, what we're seeing is just continued strength in, the, in demand. And it's not just here in the U.S., it's equally in Europe. Uh, and um, part of that is a function of uh, greater confidence among the consumer. You heard it yesterday in some of the Fed discussion, uh, disinflation and the consumer sort of playing strong. Uh, and so we continue to see considerable demand, you know, such that this doesn't appear to be kind of a momentary surge or a revenge, if you will, coming out of COVID. There's something that feels a bit more permanent to this. We're seeing it across many of the airlines. And I think there's more to come. You know, we're not yet back to international travel uh, uh, to pre-pandemic levels. And business is not yet back to where it was. And so notwithstanding elevated demand and a forward view on demand, there's more to come in the context of what's available to us. All right. Well, specific question from uh, your investor base. And I think the expectation is EBITDA next year will be lower than this year. I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but you seem to be indicating that you could see EBITDA growth. No, I think we could see and likely will see EBITDA growth into, into 2024. That's based in some measure on stability in the base business. But equally, we are pursuing a number of areas of growth to take the business up and broader, including, uh, as you know, renting cars to rideshare drivers like Uber and Lyft, doing that both in the U.S. Uh, and in Europe. We're bringing new life to a value brand that we've owned for a while called Dollar that I think can compete well. We'll use lower depreciating cars, less expensive cars, uh, and, and be able to charge affordable rate for that very large addressable market. And then our European business, as I mentioned, that's been in uh, restructuring. We've taken considerable cost out. All of our countries in Europe are proving profitable. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's considerable business to be had there. What is your base case scenario for the economy, Stephen, in order to give, to give these financial forecasts? Well, I think the base case is that we see stability. We're not looking for expansive uh, growth, nor are we, you know, looking for a reversal in the context of rate cut or the like. Stability and increasing confidence, uh, you know, will uh, materialize in increasing demand and business for us. It's interesting, but, you know, the rental car company is kind of on the tail end of a decision that's being made around travel, meaning a customer is deciding to go on a vacation or not, not because the rate on the car is 5 or $10 higher or lower. There are other larger inputs to that decision. Similarly, a business trip is decided not on whether the rental car is expensive or cheap. And so we are riding kind of broader economic trends and levels of confidence that are in the economy, much of which we are seeing, you know, expressed not just in our company or in the rental car space, with very, very high utilization into the mid-80s, meaning 85-ish percent of our cars are on rent on any given day. But we're seeing that play out in capacity on the airlines and in the hotels.